If you are looking to make great pour over coffee, you definitely want to invest in a good electric gooseneck kettle. So we've taken some of our favorites. We're gonna be doing some tests with them and going over the features and figuring out if one of these might be best for you right at home. Hello, my name is Steven Holm and I'm with Home Grounds. We're a place that you can go to learn more about brewing and enjoying better quality coffee right at home. If you're new around here, welcome. If you'd like to subscribe and like this video, that would help us, but it would also help you so you don't miss out on any of our newer videos or miss out on any of our giveaways that we do in these videos like the one we have today. So like I said, today we were talking about electric gooseneck kettles, but more specifically, variable temperature electric gooseneck kettles, which means that we are able to set an exact temperature that we are going to heat the water up to, which is great for coffee brewing because sometimes we want to vary that temperature by just a few degrees versus just having an electric kettle that heats up the water until boiling and then stops it automatically. Here we are able to set an exact temperature. Now a couple things I want to say right from the beginning regarding these kettles. We have chosen all of these kettles specifically because they either have great reviews, they have great features, or we just have good experience with all of them. We purchased almost all of these kettles with our own money except for one of them, which was a company that reached out a while back, wanted to send us a kettle to try out. I also want to say up front that these are all fantastic electric kettles. You can't really go wrong with any of them. Today we're getting really specific and nitpicky, so these aren't necessarily things that would deter people from buying any of these kettles. All that to say, these are all great kettles. No one's sponsoring this video. We do have a giveaway included, but none of those companies have paid to be a part of this, and these are all our own opinions regarding these kettles. So today we're gonna to be looking at a few criteria to judge how these perform. First off, we're gonna be looking at how fast they heat up, how accurate that heating up is. Then we're gonna be doing a sort of flow test that we'll get into later. And then just going over the feel, the balance, and any additional features. So I'm just gonna start off by introducing each kettle, talking about how much it costs, and then we'll dive into the tests. So first off, we have the Bonavita Variable Temperature Electric Kettle. This one is the one liter model. There's also a 1.7 liter model, I believe. And now Bonavita also has a few different kettles. They have a just electric kettle that just heats up to boiling and stops right away. They also have a non-electric one, so you would put it on your stove or just add boiling water to it. And then this kettle is 130 US dollars. Moving on from there, we have the Fellow Ode. You're probably familiar with Fellow. They make some really great quality coffee products. And this was one of their first big sellers. They also have a few different models. This is the Stag EKG. This retails for 140 US dollars. Next up, we have the Kasori Electric Gooseneck Kettle with five variable presets, pour over kettle and coffee kettle, 100% stainless steel inner lid and bottom, 1200 watt quick heating, 0.8 liter matte black kettle. This is a kettle from a company called Kasori. It is the top rated gooseneck kettle on Amazon with like 10,000 five star reviews. So I needed to give this a shot. It retails for 63 US dollars. So it is by far the cheapest on this list. And it has some interesting features we'll get into later. Next we have the Bruista Artisan One Liter. Bruista is a company that makes a lot of coffee gear. They have some brewers, some other accessories, but this is their wooden model kettle. It is beautiful looking and it retails for 160 US dollars. Last up we have the Saki Bruistan. They are a relatively new company that only has a couple products out there. They are, like I said earlier, the company that reached out and wanted to send me this kettle to try out. They did not pay me or anything, but I enjoy this kettle. It is 140 US dollars. So now the first test that I wanted to perform with all these kettles is to find out how fast they heated up to a coffee brewing temperature. I decided on a temperature of 205 degrees Fahrenheit. Now each of these kind of performs a little bit differently as far as heating up to a specific temperature. Some of these kettles, they just ramp up that temperature and try to get there as quickly as possible. What that means is that that water is probably going to keep rising a little bit and go past your target temperature versus some of these are made to get that exact set temperature and so they will go up quickly and then slow down around five degrees beforehand and sort of just 
glide up to your set temperature so they are not overshooting it. Last thing is the amount of water that I wanted to use. Now, I was sort of limited because the Kasori here is a 0.8 liter maximum capacity. So all of these, I used 0.8 liters. I weighed it out and added it to a room temperature kettle. We started from room temperature water and yeah, let's go over the results. So the Bonavita is one of those kettles that ramps up as quickly as possible and overshoots your temperature slightly. It took five minutes and 15 seconds for this kettle to reach 205 degrees Fahrenheit. However, I should note right in the beginning that this is the most used kettle on the table. I've had this for years. I don't know if that necessarily affects how it performs. I don't know if heating elements will maybe get less powerful over time, but Anyways, this was the slowest kettle of all of them to get up to that target temperature. Next up was the Kello. Kello. Fellow. And this behaved the exact opposite of the Bona Vita. This kettle is designed specifically for pour over coffee brewing. So my assumption is that Fellow wanted to make sure that your temperature set was the temperature that you were getting out and they were not going to overshoot it. So this kettle ramped up pretty quickly to around like 198 to 200 degrees and then very slowly raised the temperature one degree by one degree until they hit that 205 degrees. And altogether that took four minutes and 47 seconds. Next up was the Kasori. This one took four minutes and 58 seconds. It was similar to the Bonavita in that it just goes up really quickly, stops as soon as it reaches a certain temperature. I'm assuming that this is such a cheap kettle that they didn't really put in the technology to be able to slowly ramp up your temperature, but it went up there fairly quickly. Next up is the Brewista. This one took pretty much exactly five minutes to reach the 205 degrees Fahrenheit. It was another one similar to the Fellow that it really took its time near the end, although it only took five minutes, so it's not like it took a really long time. Neither of these took a long time, it just really quickly got up to around 200 degrees, slowly ramped up. So this is another nice one if you don't want to overshoot your temperature. Last up is the Saki. This one took four minutes and 30 seconds, so it was definitely the quickest out of the bunch, and that was actually the average of a few that I did because I was kind of amazed that it took four minutes and 15 seconds the first time I did it. And similar to the fellow in the Brewista, it ramped up and slowed down near the target temperature, but it was still able to do that relatively quickly, making it the fastest of the bunch. Now another test related to this one that I just did is I wanted to test the actual temperature consistency of the readouts on each kettle because, you know, we put a lot of trust into the readouts that we're getting, say, I set this to 205 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't actually know if that is going to be the correct temperature at the end. So I took a thermometer that I had at home that I use for cooking that's really accurate. And I tested each one of these kettles to see how accurate they were at that 205 degree mark. And there were only a couple that stood out and that was the Kasori and the Saki. They were both a few degrees off not really something that I would be super worried about, but once again, if you're getting really precise with this, maybe you don't want to have your display being a couple degrees off of the actual temperature. There's a cricket in here. There's crickets in this building. It's very annoying in the background. I hope that you are not distracted by the crickets. You know, maybe I'll just throw music in here that sounds like crickets chirping on the beat. The second test that I wanted to do with all these kettles was to test the pouring speeds. And I don't know about most people, but for me, when I'm using a kettle, there's a couple things that I sort of look for and that stand out to me. First off is how slow I can get that pour to be. Because when I'm making a pour over, typically I'm pouring fairly slow depending on my grind size, but I want a kettle that at least has the ability to pour as slow as possible. The way that I performed this test was I took each of the kettles and I poured in 100 gram spurts, timing how long it took me to hit zero to 100 grams, 100 to 200 grams, and so on, until I had five data sets of pouring 100 grams from each kettle. I took an average of each of those five data points and converted it into X amount of grams per second. I also want to note that all of these are gooseneck kettles, so they are meant to pour fairly slow. So these are all, once again, just very, very nitpicky things. 
All of these are great for pour overs. It's just sometimes I want a little more control on the slow end. So I wanted to do this test to find out which is best for that. Also, as I was doing those 100 gram spurts, I was taking note of how the kettle felt pouring and trying to balance it more full versus empty. So we'll talk about that a little bit also. And then on the opposite side of things, I also wanted to test how quickly these could pour water. Because I don't know about you, but if I have a gooseneck kettle in my kitchen for pour over coffee, I'm also gonna be using that for other things, whether that be brewing tea or just heating up water really quickly for a cooking recipe. And so if I have a kettle that pours obnoxiously slow, like one of these that we'll find out, then I kind of get frustrated with it if I just wanna pour enough for a mug of tea. So in order to find out how fast each of these kettles could pour, I filled them with that 800 milliliters of water and I just poured as quickly as I could and timed it and stopped as soon as the last drop came out. And then after we go over each kettle's results, I'll be throwing up a graph so we can see a visual representation of how they compare from one to another so you don't have to memorize all of these numbers. So starting with the Bonavita here. On the slow side, we had 3.42 grams per second. And then on the fast end, we had 35.85 grams per second. As far as the feel goes with pouring from more full to more empty on the Bonavita, I feel that it's very consistent, but that could also be once again that I have a lot of experience with this kettle. I've been using it for years, so how it performs is very familiar to my hands. The fellow over here is one that pours pretty slow because like I said earlier, it is made for pour over coffee brewing. So on the slow side, it can pour at 2.66 grams per second, but then on the fast end, it only goes to 17.03 grams per second, which it's twice as slow pouring it out fast as any of these other ones. Now, as far as consistency with the fellow going from full to more so on the empty end, I felt like it was getting a little more difficult when it was empty to pour consistent. So in the data sets of pouring the 100 gram spurts, each one gradually got faster and faster. So I was having a hard time getting that nice, slow, consistent speed. So that's something to take note with the fellow. Now the Kasori here. On the slow end, this one was 2.69 grams per second, so just barely faster than how slow this one can go. And then on the fast end, it was 41 grams per second. Now, as far as the balance goes with the Kasori, it was the total opposite of the fellow. I found it getting easier and easier to getting a slow, consistent pour as the kettle was emptying versus when it was really full, it was hard to get that balance. And We'll kind of talk about why that might be later as far as how the kettles are balanced themselves. Now the Bruista over here, it could go 3.27 grams per second for the slowest, and then 46.84 grams per second on the fastest, which made it the fastest pouring kettle out of the whole bunch. As far as consistency along the way, it was similar to the Kasori, where the less water felt a little more comfortable than when it was really full. Now for the sake over here, on the slow end, it was 2.51 grams per second, and then fast, 37.94 grams per second. And so this was the slowest kettle out of the whole bunch, which was a bit of a surprise for me. And it was pretty consistent the entire way through, going from full to more so on the empty end, felt pretty consistent all along the way. So now I'm gonna be throwing up a graph on the screen that has each of the kettles on the x-axis and then the data points for both the slowest and fastest speeds above that, both so you can see the variance going from the slowest to the fastest and then also how they compare to one another. Now, first thing we notice is that as far as the slow pouring speeds, they're all very slow. Like I said before, they're gooseneck kettles, so they are meant to pour very slow. And I wouldn't necessarily say that I would purchase one of these because it could pour a little bit slower than the others. And then on the other side of the spectrum, if you're looking to also be able to pour fast if you're using the kettle for other things, they're all gonna be totally adequate except for the fellow. This is the only one that I actually felt like it was very slow trying to pour it as fast as possible. Once again, very nitpicky thing that doesn't actually matter. 
Now we're going to be moving along from the tests and going over each kettle individually, talking about things like how well they balance, how they feel, any additional features that we haven't mentioned, and then lastly, if there are any downsides to each kettle. So let's start off with the Bonavita variable temperature. So the Bonavita kettle. This is a really well-built kettle. Like I said, I've had this for years. They are designed to last. They've been around for a long time, so we have a lot of user experience with them in the industry. When this kettle is empty, it weighs 577.5 grams, making it the lightest of all the kettles that we'll see here today. With the balancing of this kettle, it does favor the next side quite a bit. What I mean by that is when we go to pick this up, you can see that it wants to be tilting towards the neck. Pretty much all of these kettles have that a little bit. This one is definitely a little bit more than others. See that it just wants to start pouring when I lift it up. I'm not really doing any pushing of it on my own. That is just all of the kettle working its way out. As far as other features with the kettle itself, the lid, nice. I don't, there's not really anything special about lids. Now, if we look at the base here, I really like the base of this kettle. It comes with this protective cover. So if you are using it in a cafe or somewhere there where it's gonna get a lot of dirt, you can just take this right off, rinse it, wash it off, and then you're not getting your base dirty all the time. So if we take it off and leave it off for a minute, we can look at the base here and show what some of the features are. So we have an on off button, very exciting. Right above there is a temp set button, and that is going to bring you through different temperature settings, hence temp set, that are programmed into this base. You can just press this until you're near your target temperature and then adjust it with the plus or minus right here to set the precise temperature. We also have a Fahrenheit and Celsius button, and then right below that is a hold switch if you're unfamiliar with hold settings on kettles. Basically, if we have that engaged, it is going to bring the kettle up to your target temperature and then hold it there. Now the hold setting with this kettle is not my favorite. Anytime that you remove the kettle from the base, the hold is going to reset. So if you put this back on here, your hold is canceled out. You have to press it again. And you also obviously have to remember to hit it in the first place. If you wanna use that function, there is no auto hold. There is also no beep with this kettle, so you have no way of knowing when it's done other than you just look and see that it's done heating up and it's at your target temperature. Not a big deal, but if you wanna beep, you don't get the beep. Now if you look at the bottom of here, see that we have this nice cord management system where you can roll up your power cord, have it out, and then you don't have a ton of power cord lying out. All around, base I like. The only real downsides with the kettle are, like I said, maybe the balance is favoring the neck a little bit more than others, and then there's no auto hold and no beep. Otherwise, it's a really well-built kettle. It's going to last you a long time, and it does what a kettle is supposed to do. Now let's move on from this to the Fellow Stag EKG. So right away you notice this is a beautiful looking kettle. All matte black, not a bunch of buttons, we just have one scrolling knob here, a display, and a couple switches on the back that are hidden. It just, it looks really good. Now as far as the kettle itself, it weighs empty about 840 grams, which is pretty heavy. Not the heaviest we'll be looking at today, but this has a lot of back weight in the handle, so you're not having to fight with the kettle as much when you're pouring. So that's why it's able to pour super slow, is it doesn't take much effort to be doing this right here. Not a lot of fatigue on your wrists if Say you're testing five different kettles and pouring a bunch in one day and you walk away and have to stretch your wrists a bunch and it hurts for a few days, you're not gonna get any of that with the fellow. Other features with the kettle itself. The handle here is a little different. It took me a bit to get used to it. I'm not really sure what the go-to is as far as hand placement. The inside, once again, we do not need to look at the inside. It is just an inside of a kettle. So then if we look at the base here, like I said before, it's really nice and simple looking. We just have a control wheel that you do have to rotate to get to your temp. So we don't have any preset temperatures that we can scroll through. If you're going from 212 degrees to 170, you have to 
scroll quite a bit. On the back here, we have a couple switches. So we have a hold switch, which is going to be an auto hold. So if you have that on, whenever the kettle is on the base, it will automatically heat up and hold to your temperature. I really like that feature. That's what I use all the time. And then on the other side, we just have the Fahrenheit and Celsius switch. Similar to the Bonavita, there is no beep in this kettle, which I wish there was because there's not really a good way of knowing when it's heated up. You just have to look at the display and if it's saying hold, you have reached your temperature. Otherwise, you have no way to know that it's gotten up there. Now, probably the most exciting feature with this kettle is that there's a built-in game. We have a Wormy, which you start by doing some secret uh, controls and you can play the Wormy game. Now, I don't really like to brag, uh, but I was pretty good. So overall, the fellow, very nice looking kettle with pretty much all the features you can need. There is no beep and you do have to scroll for all of your temperatures, so I would say those are the biggest downsides. Otherwise, it pours really nice for pour overs. It looks good doing it and it's not over complicated. Now let's move on from this to the Kasori. Now the Kasori electric kettle, black, all those things. This was the top rated kettle on all of Amazon and I think that's for a good reason. It does favor the neck a little bit. I think it could use a bit more balancing come in here. As far as other features with the kettle itself, it is a 0.8 liter max capacity. I've heated up a liter in it at a time, but you didn't hear that from me. <laughs> We look at the inside of the, once again, nothing exciting with the inside. Now this is the only kettle base that doesn't have a temperature readout display. We just get all of these different buttons here with preset temperatures. They just press that and the kettle will heat up to that temperature. So we have green, green tea, if you're unfamiliar, which is 180 degrees, oolong, which is 195 degrees, Coffee, 205 degrees. Boil black, 212 degrees. And then we have my brew, which we'll talk about in a second. We have a hold temp button and then a cancel. You can't dial in precise temperatures from the base itself. However, where this gets interesting is with the app. So we are able to control this kettle with an app from your phone. So we are able to set exact temperatures. We're able to see that the kettle is heating up and what the current temperature is, we can turn on and off hold temp. On here also, you can see my brew, which you can set up your own custom temperature that will be saved whenever you want to heat up your kettle. So you don't necessarily have to open up your app every time that you want to heat up to your specific temperature. Now, if we go into the more advanced options in here, we can see we have an always hold temp option, which is nice. It will always hold your temp. We have maintain hold temp, which is an option where once you remove the kettle from the base and then you put it back on, it will keep maintaining that temperature. We also have an option on here to turn on and off the beeping which is something I didn't mention before, this beeps. So that's nice, but it doesn't have to beep. So if you're a beeper or a non-beeper, this kettle's for you. Oh, and I also forgot to mention, there's a delay start option on here. So I can set this kettle to start heating up within the next 12 hours automatically. So I can say, hey, in eight hours when I wake up in the morning, start heating up my kettle so I can get it going for a pour over. So wrapping up with the Kasori, as far as downsides with this kettle, really, I mean, it's maybe slightly cheaper built. The base here is all plastic and there is something about the kettle that feels a little bit cheaper. And then we also have no temperature readout on the front. So the fact that you do have to get your phone out and open the app if you wanna see your exact temperature can be a downside. But I think if you were just using this to heat up water and you don't have to worry about checking the exact temperature or anything, this kettle can be a really, really great option for you if you're looking to save some money. So the Bruista Artisan. This is another kettle similar to the Fellow where you just look at it and it looks really nice. The matte black finish on the kettle itself and then the wooden accents just makes this feel a little more luxurious, a little more elegant. 
As far as the balancing on this kettle goes, when it's empty it weighs 713.2 grams. So kind of in the middle of the weights that we're looking at today. Now other features with the kettle itself. This is, like I said, a one liter capacity. Looks like all the other ones. And also you can adjust how tight fitting the lid is. Now if we move right from there to the base, you probably notice right away that this is definitely the largest base that we're looking at today. And if I lift this up to show you, you can see that right away you don't really see anything other than a power switch. So I will plug this in and then we can actually look at what features are on here. So starting on this side, we have a Fahrenheit Celsius switch. We have a rapid boil, which is going to bring the kettle up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit as fast as possible. I didn't mention that earlier, but that is nice if you just use just under boiling temperature water for your coffee brewing. This kettle, similar to the Bonavita, has temperature presets. So we have 122, 140, 158, 176, 185, 190, 204, 208, and then you can go up or down a few degrees within all of those to get your exact temperature. And then up here we have our first timer and a kettle base. So once you remove the kettle from the base, you can press that and it will begin a timer for your pour over. Now, I don't know how useful that is for people. I think the majority of us probably have a timer built into our scale. So this base pretty much has everything you could need in a kettle. Now, if we're getting really nitpicky about everything, I would say a few of the only downsides with this kettle is, first off, at least for me, just the feeling is a little bit off. I wish it was maybe a little more compact. I think the kettle itself is more bulbous than any of the other ones we're looking at, so maybe that's why it feels a little long to me. And then also, there is something about placing the kettle on the base where it just feels a little harsh, like I almost want a little more cushioning between the kettle itself and the base, which is such a nitpicky thing to be looking at, but just all the other kettles, I'm used to it sort of falling into place, whereas this just sort of quickly hits the base. Nothing should really deter you from buying this kettle. It is beautiful, works great. Anyways, let's move on. So last up is the Saki Barista. Now empty, this kettle is the heaviest of all the ones we're looking at. It is 858 grams. But as far as balance goes, I think this is the best balance as far as handle and spout or neck goes. Because when I lift it up, it wants to go a little bit towards the neck but I think because of the interesting shape of this handle, it sort of forces you to have a little bit more weight in the handle itself. And so that's probably why we're able to pour so much slower at a nice consistent speed and go all the way too quickly. Features on the kettle itself, the lid here is a little bit different where it's just setting inside of there with these rubber gaskets. And so I don't know if over time, maybe those could wear out a little bit, Right now, no issues whatsoever. I have no reason to believe that they would wear out. Now the handle, like I said, feels a little interesting. I haven't really figured out the best way to hold it yet. I could place my thumb up on top here, be going like that, or on the side, and then it feels more like I'm pouring like from the side like this. So it might take a little bit of getting used to with that. And then the last thing I should notice is that a thermometer doesn't fit in these holes. So you really have to rely on the temperature readout on the base itself. Now this kettle is super minimal as far as the display goes. We just have a power button, minus, plus, and a timer. So once again, we have a timer that counts down for you before it starts. Then we have a timer for our pour over. Now this kettle operates a little bit differently. Unfortunately, you do have to press the plus and minus buttons to adjust the temperature. It is a like press and hold where if you press it and hold it down, it'll skip more than just one number at a time. And then also you might notice a red ring down here. And an interesting feature of this kettle is that it has this red LED that's going to be pulsing as it's heating up. They say like breathing or like a heartbeat when it's going. It looks pretty cool. Now one of the bigger downsides to this kettle for me is the auto hold feature. So this kettle has an auto hold for 60 minutes and there's no way to turn that off except for just turning off the base completely. Now once again this kettle does have a beep which it's a nice beep so beep 
So all in all, this kettle, you know, it had the slowest pouring speed. It had the quickest heat up time. I would say that as far as balance goes between the handle and the neck, it feels really great. And it just has a few little quirky features like the auto hold and then this handle here that I'm still getting used to, but I can look past those things. But just so you know, and you can take those into consideration. So that is our comprehensive guide to all these variable temperature electric kettles. These are all really great options for your home. And I hope that me getting really nitpicky in today's video was maybe helpful for you if you're someone who wants say variability in your flow rate, or you want it to heat up as quickly as possible, or maybe there's certain features that one of these offers that maybe the others don't. But if you're just looking for a great kettle, any of these would be a great option for your home. Thank you so much for watching today. If you have any additional questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy brewing. This whole video of comparing electric variable temperature gooseneck kettles, we're, we're very niche here. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty I I was like pretty good. Um like I, I don't like to brag. I am a Fahrenheiter. Uh